In this series of videos, we're going to be covering a topic in physics. Uh, we're going to be covering the topic of how to take an overall vector and break it into its components. And also how to take the components of a vector and figure out the characteristics of the overall vector. So again, our topic here is how to break a vector into components or how to um, go from the components back to the overall vector. So this is a very key topic that's usually covered uh, very early in the first few weeks of uh, the first semester of any physics course. Uh, and then that's a skill that's going to be pretty heavily relied on through a lot of the subsequent portions of the physics course. Um, so it's very important to get very adept at working with the components of a vector. And if you don't get adept at breaking vectors into components, you're going to be really severely handicapped for the entire rest of your physics course. Uh, so the purpose of this set of videos is to help people master this skill of going from the overall vector to the components or going from the components back to the overall vector. Uh, I should say that breaking a vector into components is one of the best tricks that physicists have thought of. Uh, and it's not surprising, therefore, that um, that's a trick that's relied on uh, so frequently in physics. Uh, again, um, as you go through the course, hopefully you'll come to appreciate that breaking vectors into components is really a very clever trick for solving problems. Uh, but obviously that trick is not going to help us um, if we're not very good at breaking vectors into components. Uh, and then as well, it's important to be able to take the components and go back to the overall vector. So that's what we'll be covering in this series of videos. Um, now, the method for um, going from a vector to the components and back again is to use trigonometry. So another title for this series of videos might have been Trigonometry for Physics. We're going to be going over some uh, key topics in trigonometry that will help you in your physics course. And actually, even if you're not interested in uh, physics specifically, it's possible that uh, you might find uh, the review of trigonometry that we're going to have uh, in these videos helpful just to learn a little bit of trigonometry. So I'm going to be uh, especially focused on how to apply the trigonometry to physics, uh, but even people who are not interested in physics but just need to brush up on a little elementary trick uh, might find these uh, videos helpful. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. Here's the address www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thanks. These videos are intended to help students who are finding this material to be difficult. So I'm going to be going through the material very slowly, I'm going to give lots of examples, and I'm going to repeat myself a lot. And hopefully all those things will help to make these videos more helpful to students who find the material to be difficult. The flip side of that is that if you don't find this material to be difficult, uh, you might be very bored uh, by watching these videos. Well, that's okay. In that case, maybe um, we prefer to learn the material in some other way. Maybe just by going to class or even just by reading your textbook. Uh, but the intended audience, again, for these videos is students who are finding the material to be difficult. Now, I mentioned that the idea of breaking a vector into components is really one of the very clever ideas that physicists have come up with. So before we go into the mechanics of how to break vectors into components, I'd just like to give you a little bit of an idea of why components are such a clever idea and how they're so helpful to us. So let me just uh, take a few minutes here just to give you a couple of examples that show why having the components of a vector are helpful. Uh, and then uh, pretty soon we'll get into the mechanics of how to actually break a vector into components. Well, let's say that we're considering somebody who's walking five, mile, uh, five meters east. Somebody who's walking five meters east, and then they're walking seven meters east. Uh, and let's say we wanted to know um, what's their total displacement from where they started. After going five meters east and then seven meters east, what's their total displacement from where they started? Well, we could draw some vectors that represent this motion. So let's say that this is where we're starting. 
Uh, and then we're going five meters east. Uh, perhaps you've already gotten far enough into your physics course that you can see uh, that this is what's called a vector. Uh, you might have learned in your physics course is that a vector um, is a concept that has both a magnitude and a direction. So the magnitude of this vector is indicated by its length, which is five meters, but its direction is pointing to the right, or that's what we could interpret as east. So here we have five meters east. So oftentimes we can represent vectors by arrows. We're representing this displacement vector by an arrow. The length of the vector indicates um, the uh, magnitude, which is five meters, and the direction of the arrow indicates the direction of the vector. Now after we go five meters, we're going another seven meters east. So here's another vector arrow indicating that from this point we continued and went another seven meters east. You can see that again, this arrow has the same direction as this one. Um, on the other hand, you can see this arrow is a little bit longer than this one because it represents a greater magnitude. I hope you can see how now the length of the arrow indicates the magnitude, which is the number. Uh, and then the arrowhead indicates what direction we're moving in. All right, now the question was, what's our overall displacement from the starting point? Well, here's where we were initially, and here's our final point. This is I for the initial point, and this is F for the final point. Well, we can draw the overall vector here. Here's our overall displacement. Our overall displacement in going from the initial point to the final point. Now, this long arrow here indicates our, our, um, our overall displacement. Uh, it's what we get when we take this vector and then add this vector on top. Well, what is the overall magnitude and direction of this vector? I think it's pretty plain that the length of this arrow is 7 meters. I'm sorry, is 12 meters. I think it's pretty clear that we can just take 5 plus 7 and get 12. 5 plus 7 is 12, and that gives us the overall magnitude of the overall displacement. So overall, we've, gone, uh, we've been displaced 12 meters from our initial point. So it was quite easy to add these two vectors together. By the way, maybe you're far enough in your physics course that you can recognize that I used here the head-to-tail method. Um, I put the head of the first vector pointing to the tail of the next vector head to tail, head of the first vector pointing to the tail of the next vector, and that gave us the resultant. This overall vector here is what's called the resultant of these two vectors on top. That just means that it's what we get when we add these two vectors together. Okay, but the common sense of this is that if you go five meters east and then seven meters east, it's pretty obvious that overall um, you're gonna end up 12 meters east of where you started. Let me give you another example. Suppose we go six meters north, and then two meters south. Six meters north, and then two meters south. Well, what's our overall displacement from where we started? If we go six meters north and two meters south, what's our overall displacement from where we started? By the way, in these videos, um, I'm going to be posing a lot of questions and problems for you, and I'm hoping that every time I pose a question or a problem, I'm hoping that you'll pause the video and try to work that out on paper. Some of the questions I'm going to pose to you are going to be uh, very easy, and you can work those out in a couple seconds, and some of the questions might take you a couple minutes to work out. But regardless, anytime I pose a question or a problem, you'll get a lot more out of these videos if you pause the video at each point. Um, and try the problem on your own. So I'm not always going to remind you to pause the video, but I'm hoping that every time I pose a question or a problem, you're going to pause the video and try to work it out on paper. Uh, so I hope that uh, you've already paused the video and tried to work this question out on paper. Let's try drawing some vectors. Um, so we're going from our initial point, and we're going six meters north. Here's our initial point. Uh, and then from where we got, we're going two meters back south. So we went up from the initial point six meters north, and then we went down two meters uh, south. Now, what's the resultant? What's the overall displacement? Well, here's our final position. We started here, and we ended up here at the final position. So the overall displacement would be represented by this arrow. This arrow shows that overall, we started at this initial point and went to this final point. So notice that the resultant, or the sum, starts at the initial point and points to the final point. The resultant or sum of vectors starts at the initial point and goes to the final point. Here this resultant is starting at the initial and going to the final point. We saw that in this example too. The resultant was starting at the initial point and going to the final point. And again you can see we're using the head to tail method. The head of our first vector is pointing to where the tail of the next vector is coming from. Uh, here's the head of this vector and that's pointing uh, as a, at the same uh, height on the board as the tail of this vector. 
um, and we use that to find our overall resultant vector here. So what's the length of this resultant vector here? Um, well, I think it's pretty clear that we are now an overall displacement of four meters from where we started. We went six meters from the initial point, but then we went two meters back. So our overall displacement here would be four meters. So this is the overall displacement from the initial point. Overall, we've gone four meters north. Four meters north would be a more accurate way to say our overall displacement. 